you're speaking from the uh, police station in Wanapee, New Jersey. Uh, this is January 15th, at approximately 1.15 p.m. Uh, we're up here on an investigation of a number of UFO sighting reports during uh, the past few days. The NICAP staff here is Gordon Lohr, uh, Lee Katchen, and uh, Ms. Kathy Brennan. Uh, we're speaking now with Mayor Wolf of Wanakee and reporter Howard Bell, Ball of what paper? Patterson News. Patterson News. Uh, now, uh, Howard, do you want to proceed with uh, what you started to say before? Well, I'll give you the background, basically. Uh, as a newspaper editor, I sit in a desk and uh, uh, on a night uh, I may handle three and, three and four telephone calls of uh, sightings in the sky. Uh, so I've gotten into the habit on my way to work or when I'm traveling in the dark, I scan the sky and I've learned a little bit about the sky so that when someone calls I, I can answer a question. I saw this and it was not uh, what you think it was, it was jetliner so-and-so which is out of Newark and flies across the sky at this time of night. On this particular evening, it was Tuesday, I was a little bit late for work, so I left my home around 6.15. This was what evening? This was Tuesday, right, January... It would be the 11th. 11th, yeah, January 11th. So I left my home, and I traveled to the city of Patterson to work. I traveled via the Hamburg Turnpike. This is a fairly well-traveled road. Where is uh, your home? My home is Pompton Lakes. Uh, about five minutes on the road, uh, I'd say at 20, uh, 20 minutes past six on that date, uh, the newsman on the radio was ballyhooing the 6.30 news. I know it was before 6.30. Uh, I was uh, at the near, I should say, near the junction of Colfax Road and Hamburg Turnpike. At this point, Hamburg Turnpike it lies in a southeasterly direction. I was, in other words, traveling southeasterly. I saw, as I crested a hill, a very extremely bright light. Could you it compare was, it to a landing light? Uh, no, I couldn't, because it didn't have the downward beam that I've seen on the uh, on the landing lights. Uh, I would say say this about it. The thing that really brought my attention to it was that uh, as I traveled along, in general, a light, a star light, will seem to travel with you. This didn't, this seemed to come at me. I got a red light and stopped, and I kept it in observation while the red light was, uh, I'd say about a minute, the length of time it take, takes a light to change. In that time, it stopped, and it made a transverse movement. Uh, I can't tell you in feet or miles, but it did make a transverse movement to the west. I was observing it in the south-southeast. When it made its transverse movement, it paused again and then took a uh, south-southeast to north-northwest course. I don't think that this could have been the planet Venus because at 6.20 p.m., according to my, what I think, Venus would have been in the southwest at that time. And I wouldn't have been able to see it because there's a tree cover at this particular place. Of course, this is an afterthought. I, I went by there again. There's a tree cover, and I couldn't definitely see that portion of the sky. How high in the sky was this light that you saw? I say it was 12 o'clock high. I mean, uh, oh, you mean uh, uh, in, in, in as far as up from the horizon to the zenith? Uh, from the horizon to the zenith, this was uh, 60 degrees. Pretty and much it, overhead. Yes, and it passed over my head passed over my head and left. I pulled it as high of the road and watched it. And I lost it. It went over my head and out of sight. The light I saw was of a bright brilliance. I'd say 16 or 17 times the brilliance of uh, any planet or star I've ever seen. I would say also that I tried very, very, very much to look around and see if there were red or green running lights or uh, any of the associated uh, aircraft that characteristics, and I couldn't find any. Uh, I didn't hear anything. I was inside the automobile, and I didn't think to roll the window down. I observed the entire thing through the windshield and through the uh, uh, back window. But I did see it go back over my head 
in the, the uh, north northwest direction. You recall the weather conditions? Bright and clear. And about how long did this last? How long did you have it? I had it. I had it in observation. Three minutes, four minutes. Did you see it over the reservoir? I didn't know at all. No. no. Did you see the uh, any sign of the red beam that was reported? I didn't see anything. Like that. Uh, what color? Was there any color to it? No. I say, I I I give it a, a a color. If I could give it a color, I'd say a brilliant blue white. You know. Uh, Similar to uh, the uh, ignition of uh, uh, magnesium in pure oxygen, that, that really bright light. Did it travel very fast? No, I didn't notice it traveled. It traveled uh, uh, a little better than the speed of an aircraft. But of course, I I figure those things are relative at the, the height and where it was. I believe I sighted the thing much higher than than the, the people in Wanakee. I think it was at a greater height. Now, while you were watching it, uh, what thoughts went through your mind as to what it might have been? Well, I thought it was a, I thought it was a helicopter with a bright strobe light, which is a, uh, which is a, one of the things I told the Air Force that I thought it was, and I think they mounted it back at me. But uh, as I say, I like to explain these things. We have the telephone calls coming in. I tried to think of what I could tell people this was, and I couldn't come up with an answer. So when I got to work, uh, I decided I wouldn't say anything about it to anybody. And then we started getting telephone calls, trying to explain, and uh, tried to explain to a woman what it was, and I couldn't. And so then uh, I got in contact with uh, one of our police departments who handled the radio network for the entire area, Compton Lakes, and I spoke with Officer Severin, told Officer Severin, you know, we had a number of calls, and he indicated that they had a number of calls. About, about what time was this? Well, this was in the area of 7.15 or 7.30. I, I got it I got it in Patterson at 20 minutes of 7 or so. And uh, at about 7.15 or 7.30, the thing was starting to shake up that other people were making the sight. And uh, all through the night, we got telephone calls. And then I heard that uh, Mayor Wolf of Wanakew had seen it. And I called Harry, a friend of mine. And uh, we discussed it, and much of much of what we saw was the same thing. Uh, incidentally, the course of north northwest from the corner of Colfax Road and Hamburg Turnpike leads directly to Raymond Dam. I didn't know it before, but I put a map down this morning and drew a line, which is very inaccurate, but it, it does. Um, we got a lot of, of crank calls, and I must admit that a lot of people saw airplanes that night. Uh, but I could identify them as airplanes, people who saw red and green blinking lights and the associated things that we associate with aircraft. But I can't associate anything I saw with any aircraft I've ever seen. You know what time uh, this story hit the radio? Uh, what time it hit radio? When I called WJRZ radio station to find out if their helicopter was in the air, they already knew about it. They had already had telephone calls. And I called them 7.05, something like that, in, in the area of 7 o'clock. Because I was, I, guess, I had seen the thing and I was interested. I wanted to know what it is. I'm trying to uh, get some idea of when the story might have gone out over the radio uh, to alert people. Uh, um, I think he said that they were... They were interested in it at that point, but I don't think they had broadcast it. I think they made their initial broadcast on the radio sometime around 7.30, in their 7.30 newscast. Had you gotten crank calls prior to that? We had calls prior to that, but we didn't have the crank calls until it went on radio, actually. And that got the people excited. That got the people excited. Uh, Mayor, you want to uh, give us a rundown on your experience at St. Uh, yes. Uh, to give you a little background uh, on Tuesday evening, I guess that was the 11th we were talking about. Uh, I was scheduled to go to dinner, uh, which we eventually did, uh, with Councilman Barton, Dr. Barton, uh, and Councilman Warren Hagstrom. Uh, I was ready and supposed to be picked up approximately about 5 or 10 to 7. After a little 
delay and see if they weren't. I wasn't being picked up. This was probably just a little after seven. I made a call to Councilman Martin's house, and his wife uh, told me, he says, don't you hear all that news on the, on, the radio, on the radio? And of course, she was referring to the police radio, which a report from the Montague Reservoir Police, apparently the Montague Reservoir Police, that uh, uh, he was seeing something there. And, uh, well, just a couple of minutes later, Councilman Barton and Councilman uh, Hagstrom came by. Instead of going down to the dinner, we went up to the reservoir itself. Uh, my son, uh, Billy, went along with us, and uh, we stopped at the reservoir police uh, uh, car that was on duty there. And about that time, we'll come patrol the Cisco of the one of our Wanaku police. Uh, we went uh, into what they call the Daily Track, which is to the east of the Wanaku Reservoir to see if we could see anything. Patrol the Cisco had uh, seen something before, uh, previous then. This was a few minutes ago. We're talking about maybe five minutes after seven, ten minutes after seven, or something of this nature. And, uh, we went out over there into the field, which is maybe a quarter of a mile uh, east of the Wanaku Reservoir, and uh, went down in there. It's pretty dark in there, and we thought maybe we could see something in there. Well, I couldn't see anything. I don't think anybody else saw anything. So we come back through the reservoir and went up on top of the reservoir, the dam itself. And uh, we went up. On top of the dam there, and uh, there was uh, myself, uh, Councilman Clark, Councilman Hagstrom, Coleman Cisco, and my son Billy. And uh, we uh, were up there, and of course we were in the northerly direction. The car was facing the northerly direction. Over uh, towards the Stone Town area, which is which direction? Which I'd say is probably northwest direction. Uh, what seemed to be low to the horizon was something that looked like a star. It's a little bit bigger. I would say probably a little bit brighter. Uh, I uh, viewed it, and I think everyone else did, for about maybe three, four, five minutes there. And uh, it seemed to stand in the, or stay in the one place. Now, uh, it was of a brilliance, uh, say a little brighter than a star. Uh, uh, not, a, I don't think it's uh, as, as blue as a star. Would say. I don't think so. And, uh, but uh, it did at times seem to emit the. Uh, reddish or pale green lights or even yellowish lights uh, and not all at the same time at different points. Uh, in other words, uh, when you're not going to rotate it now, uh, of course, the first thing I would think of was a helicopter or anything else, but standing and standing in that one spot for about three, four, or five minutes or a couple of minutes longer than that, and then it seemed to move over uh, just in a straight direction, either either away but what appeared to be not coming back but out further but uh, probably going towards the south or the southwest or something like that. Uh, about that time uh, we uh, turned the car around and we of course come down and uh, that we didn't do anything more about that's basically what uh, I, I saw, according to uh, reports, that uh, apparently it was moving up and down, too. But uh, I didn't see it moving up and down, at least sideways. Uh, did it move steadily? Uh, yes, it appeared to uh, move steadily. And uh, as I say, it was very close to the horizon. Like it was a little uh, of treetop levels at that point. And uh, what was the total time you saw it? Oh, I'd say about 10 minutes altogether. And how much of the sky did we cross? Oh, uh, not, not a very great distance. 
where you could specifically state that it changed from white to red or from black to black. Like like. Yes, no, it wasn't, it wasn't. And yet, and I, again, I don't know whether this was provoked by the fact that the thought was planted in my mind by the reports on the radio, or whether I was actually seeing this, but I think if you look at a star or anything long enough, you can almost see what you want to in that star. And uh, as I say, I could never, from what I saw, I could never corroborate the uh, opinions that were expressed by other people. And, uh, this, and I couldn't say that it's two feet in diameter. It certainly wasn't what I saw. It wasn't. And I mean, it certainly wasn't close what I saw. And yet it could be, it could have been 10 miles or 10 million miles away. I mean, this, this part I couldn't. Uh, say, I mean, well, I uh, wish I had seen these things that so many other people have <laughs> said they've seen. I, I would have found it intensely interesting. But, uh, and I guess we looked at it for maybe a half hour or so. Yeah. It didn't move, uh, I mean, it didn't uh, during maneuvers or did that so around? It didn't move us. And now, yeah. whether if it moved, it uh, wasn't moving to the side, it was moving, it was moving away from us in a straight line, mm -hmm. so it appeared to me to be stationary. Well, it appeared to me to move over to the one side. When I say the side, either the way to the west or southwest or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, it was moving I mean, slowly. I mean, the movement was well, so well, slight that it well, was, uh, I, I couldn't say that I uh, felt that it moved at all, and it, it didn't move. I would have thought that it moved away from us in a straight line away from us, mm -hmm. so that the degree of movement would not be noticeable. You say it was low on the horizon. I, that's one thing I thought. That this was the only thing that prompted me to make me think it was not the It was the position that it seemed to occupy in the horizon. And if it were, uh, uh, let me say this, if it was a great distance away in the position that it occupied on the horizon, I would have thought that it would have been concealed by a mountain, uh, which would make me make it appear to me that it was somewhat closer than I normally would expect a star to be. Uh, did you uh, see it against the background of anything? Uh, it's just merely the sky. Uh, it was not against the background. It wasn't in front of anything? No. Trees, no, mountains, no, no, hills? No, nothing that you could distinguish and get it and get a sighting and get a, an idea of the distance. Uh, at least I didn't see anything of that nature. But, uh, <coughs> I, uh, I have heard these other stories. I've talked to other people who have uh, felt the same way, uh, that this was something very close, but I didn't see anything. This is a performance system, or he's a gentleman in front of the space. Yes. Joe? Performance system. Yeah, I'm Dr. Joe. Dr. Joe. Do you want to uh, tell us here just what it was you saw? And uh, first of all, when? First of all, I can't tell you what it was I saw. What did it look like? Uh, I first saw it was a uh, normally colored light. And uh, this was the 11th, Tuesday? Thursday, yeah. Okay. About what time? Uh, somewhere around 6.45, 6.50 p.m. Was this Tuesday or Thursday? Thursday. 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 Tuesday the 11th. Oh, Tuesday. Thursday. 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 Okay. I thought you said Thursday. No, Thursday. Uh, and where were you at the time? We were in a sand pit here in town. It's just half a mile from here. Uh, where is it in relation to the dam? It's uh, do we still ram it down? Uh, okay, and what direction were you looking? First, I was looking uh, south, southeast over Ponce, and that's where the original report came from. Didn't see anything there, and the radio dispatcher said he received two calls from our town, and that's when I made this turn with the police car and looked back up over Midville, back up over the Ram and Dam, made the sight. And what did you see? This bright light uh, appeared to be multicolored. If you stopped and looked at it, uh, I, in about 10 minutes, I would assume, without checking the watch too close, approximately 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Uh, 
what did it do? It took us in this one spot, man. It's been all day there, staying in one spot. It was just uh, changing your variation of the color of the light. So, uh, how did it vary? From what color? Uh, it was just bright white, and after uh, going to a uh, dull white, like a maybe similar to a candle, and a candle from quite a distance. And there's a slight amount of red in it. About that time, I got the radio call at the Marin Council and Bartender and the Residual. So I went on over there and went up on top of Ram Dam. Do you know of anyone who saw it uh, maneuvering over the reservoir at all? No, I've heard reports of it that saw it, as far as I'm concerned, not as far as confirmation of it. You didn't see it was at all? Here, say, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't moving at all when you watched it? No. Study. Well, this was on the first sighting I had on. Okay. Now, uh, how uh, how did uh, it disappear? How did? It... As far as I know, it uh, went out of sight in the northwest. What I've been looking at, I couldn't say for sure. I was driving the police car at the time, and uh, I think you've been up on top of that ram dam. It's quite narrow. Uh, was it anywhere at one time? Then it disappeared later. Did you did you check that uh, same spot in right. the later? Uh, it wasn't I there. I checked the following night mm -hmm. just for my own uh, satisfaction to make sure I wasn't looking at the star. And uh, I couldn't see any sight. checked again that same night? Uh, and and it later on that same night, yeah. I was back up in there and didn't see anything. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the appearance of Venus and Jupiter in the evening sky right now? Right now, yeah, Venus lays out to the southwest, and uh, Jupiter at uh, that time of night would be back over to the east. How did its brightness compare with Venus when it was really bright? Well, I would say it was brighter than Venus, than as much as I know about it, which is too much. This was your first sight. Did you see it again? Right. When? Uh, approximately 2.20, 2.30 a.m. Wednesday morning. That's January 12th. Uh, you want to describe that, where you were? Well, I was home at the time. In fact, I said I was going to bed maybe an hour or so before that. And I have a police radio on the house that's on all the time. And I heard the Mountain Station report to the cars that uh, this object had been seen over a light bulb. And it was just a matter of minutes that our car had picked it up. And he said that he saw it over to an light which was in the southern end of the world. And when he said this, I got out of bed and I was in my boat and I got out of bed in the windows and I could see this object traveling in a northerly direction. It was moving this time. It was moving. Yeah, it looked like the object did the first time. It did. It's this time it seemed to be much brighter than it did the first time. Color similar? No, it's just a real bright white color. How fast did it seem to be going? Uh, miles per hour. I couldn't say for sure, but uh, I have seen uh, the echo of two satellites going over and it appeared to me to move faster than they ever had. And how long did you watch it? You know, as I said, it's about 2 20, and I believe it was somewhere around 4 15, and we finally decided to go to bed. And it was still in the same spot. Oh, then it wasn't moving? It had stopped. No, it, uh, when it started over, it's been released by the sergeant. As I said, I got up and saw it come north. So I got back over the uh, reservoir, which would be a western direction from where I live, and it stopped. And that's right where it stayed. You, oh, saw, it. you saw it stop? Right. How long did it hover over the reservoir? Well, from uh, figure from 2 to 20 until, as I said, it was 410, 415, so somewhere around there when I finally decided to go to bed. Uh, who, uh, who started it originally uh, early in the morning? Uh, First call in. Uh, New Jersey Press, whoever that is, Howard might be able to answer that one. They were around White Buffalo, you know. Uh, I know the fellow's name. His first name is George. Uh, but uh, what happened over there, I can tell you what happened over there because I was in touch with the uh, North Haven police. Actually, North Haven got a sighting, and White Buffalo got a sighting. Uh, North Haven got the, from a woman who got up and looked out her window and saw it. And then the North Haven policeman, I believe, this is hearsay, uh, also got a sighting. And at that time, it was traveling again in that uh, northwest direction, over 
North Hill and you say North Hill and Wyckoff are very closely related. And uh, the North Hill and the policeman, as I got the message, saw it on uh, High Mountain Road which is on the border of North Halden and uh, Franklin Lake. And uh, they, this was about the same time, I believe if you check their records, of, I guess Patterson dispatches for them, I don't know who dispatches, but they got to call somewhere around 2 o'clock. Was there a threat involved in this time? No, that's on the second sighting, no. He, got, he was supposedly in the hospital at midnight, but he was still alive. He saw it the first sighting. Could you uh, give us some names of any of the witnesses who supposedly saw the red uh, light or, uh, or the white light or whatever it was? The, the stories we've picked up in uh, uh, the, uh, the papers uh, have been uh, in the press for the last week or two. A little more dramatic. Yeah, I was trying to get the uh, very clear. Well, George, George Steigman was a, had the uh, dramatic uh, angle of this yeah. two foot uh, thing. Mm -hmm. sure. You want to get exactly uh, how accurate uh, the press reports were? Uh, no, we had numerous calls on it mm -hmm. as far as this thing being cited uh, back and forth. I believe we had 11 just for our area alone. Uh, in what period? Second sighting. What kind of camera? Sir Codex, Morse 
much. It's just a small box can that's all this. Okay, so this for that kind of clear snap a couple. Nice Have you had the film process? Yeah, it's going, it should go on the set now. Uh, do you know of anyone else specifically? Somebody shot it on the pole, right? And, and sure. took a shot, I believe, it was uh, on the road sport. Mm. He got a blur in there. A big blur. Oh, cool. uh, boy. It's a new fellow down here. Sort of late the last, last uh, member of the report was put on down there. Uh, he's just got a blur, though. Right. Uh, Where's the Polaroid shot? You, oh. saw, you saw the picture? No. no. Um, was it moving rapidly when he took it? I don't, no, I don't really know. Supposedly stationary. This was, as I said, this was on the uh, second sight, and after this thing had stopped, that's when he turned to take the shot out. Also, there's a plug uh, there from the uh, Lee the Daily News. He also does a lot of work for uh, True Magazine. Uh, or the, yeah, Sergeant Cisco got his card. He has a breakdown on that. Not on the Roberts. Possibly. Short fella. I don't know what size he is, but he's a fella. I'm not really sure. On the Roberts is. A photographer from sorts, he has no connection with true, however. Well, and no connection with us. He's not known well, for selling fake flying saucer pictures, unfortunately. Oh, we had a fellow up here yesterday also that uh, supposedly he's got pictures of these flying saucers. He's been chasing these things for years. And the fellow's name? Yeah, Ben Grush. He's from Somerville. And he spent just about the entire night up here last night. Or, or he, I should say he came up around here around 5, 4.30 or 5 o'clock, and he was still here yet. What was this you told me yesterday about someone who got a daylight sighting or something? Right, uh, I had a call Thursday night, I believe it was, from a man over in Mountain Lakes. He was down on Route 22, just outside of the uh, White House. He down around Union. He and his daughter were coming east on 22, and he saw this object going south. At a tremendous rate of speed, so it was a long shaped thing. And Struck him funny as not being a jet. There was no vapor trail with it. Did he describe the shape? It was long, uh, long and egg shaped, or a thin egg shape. Uh, did he give any estimate of size? No, he said he couldn't give any estimate uh, of his uh, size of it. He said the speed on his thing was tremendous. It was really moving. Also, uh, from the time he told me, I would say approximately five minutes prior to this, uh, my wife. Next door neighbor and Lieutenant Elson saw some type of an object up over the reservoir. What that was, I couldn't say I wasn't there. This is uh, daytime or night? This was around 12.30, somewhere there around 12.30. Can you describe what they, they said they saw? No, what my wife told me, she said it was a uh, pier to beer to her, something like a uh, power puff or a power wall shape. One of these puff walls. It appeared to be that type of shape to her. Very shiny. Did it just stay there? Or did it no, it came in the same direction where the other one had disappeared from. It was it will actually be coming from northwest to slightly southeast to a fixed point, or to a point, I should say, and then veered off and went through south, which, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the time for this sighting in Union, trust me, five to ten minutes later, even three to ten minutes later, which would be in the same. Did it travel rapidly? Right. And the, the time involved would just about make it break down right now as far as the sight and as far as the angle and so forth. Did your wife say that uh, it maneuvered at all or just... No, as I say, it came out to this, from the northwest, going back up towards the east or southeast, to a point. It uh, hesitated momentarily, then it went right out to the south again. So that actually would be coming down and making a right angle. I want to make a point of emphasis here. I mean, it has nothing to do with the sightings. That, and I think uh, Joe is going to go along with what I say, that neither Joe Sisko or I would make a report on anything like this in order, uh, other than we saw something that was unusual for the fact of the matter that it makes an awful lot of work for both of us. Because uh, 
the thing is, the trouble with my work uh, by the number of phone calls and, of course, uh, other newspapers who call and new people call, and here I am on Saturday uh, somewhere. And uh, what I have a considered opinion, and I, I know I'm, maybe I'm not supposed to put an opinion. What I saw at 6.20 or 6.30 between that time was what Joe saw at 6.45. And I, if you pinpoint the course, and if you people have a map, or, whether it's an Astro map or what it is, the course is evident, and uh, there were a lot of cranks involved in this. There were a lot of people who called up who saw things that were not what we saw. And there were a lot of people who, who got the mass hysteria that always happens with something like this, the Orson Welles type thing. But there were a lot of pretty steady individuals, including... Paul Severn told me almost every policeman on patrol that night had reported citing this. Uh, they had 40 telephone calls in Pompton, at least. 40. This was the first night, Tuesday night. This was Tuesday night. This was Tuesday night. Was Tuesday night. Was Tuesday night. Also, not to interrupt Howard while he's going on this, uh, as far as this mapping and force and so forth, uh, one fellow who doesn't want to involve his dude with a job connection was trying to keep some kind of a, a triangulation going on this project. And he said it was pretty hard to do through the reports that were coming in on this thing, other than it was in this uh, general area here, and then being seen back over Wayne again and over the Fountain area, which would keep it pretty nearly some type of a course or definite area. And it's not a case where these things are far fetched where you're getting reports from 50 or 60 miles away. Uh, ties into that. The funny part is when I got telephone calls from people, and I, uh, I when, when I answered McGuire's questions, I wrote their questions down, and I asked the same questions to people who called me. And somebody who lived east of what the sighting was would report seeing it to the west. Someone who lived west of it would report seeing it to the east, so that they were... Most of these people reporting seeing the same thing. There were some ladies who called up with a, a green and red light uh, with a little white light in the back, and I knew it was a jet. Or, or, or uh, from, I got one call from Fairlawn, uh, and I went on the roof of the news building, and I looked over, and there was an airliner in the sky with its landing lights on. Right, I saw that one also. All right, and I know, I know what these things look like. Was, but the uh, thing that we funny. reported, the two of us, is the same thing, and I don't know what the devil of us. Have you ever seen anything else around here uh, in the years past that resembled that at all? Never. Nothing, to, as far as I can remember, this paper that I've seen myself. We have seen these different uh, color lights at different times, but that could be written off as a very high-flying aircraft. It's always a possibility of it. Mm -hmm. And as I said before, as far as uh, explorer through this, I've seen numerous times. It's, it's not a hobby with me, it's just curiosity. And I, like I hear about these things going over. I try to make my visit the same. I can't emphasize too much that m most of us, Joe, too, watch the sky now today, and uh, we watch it to, to, for our own protection, because I can say on the telephone, lady, you saw Flight 275 out of Newark and go to bed. It does seem like it's a little bit funny, but uh, as Howard says, he's dealing with the uh, public and the newspapers. I have to do what deal with the police officer. And it doesn't take too much for one or two people just to get shook up and start a real good case of hysteria going for you. And this one will call that one, and the next one will call two or three more, and you have a problem on your hands. We don't, we don't want it. Uh, because uh, it could cause big problems, and, the, and the, that's why I say when we reported it and uh, uh, we carried it out, and the, there was no foreknowledge between any of us. There was no, no prior connection. No prior connection. I hadn't seen, I, in fact, I hadn't talked to Joe for about three months until uh, I spoke with him that night and asked him what he had seen. Now, uh, we brought through the, the settings on Tuesday evening and Wednesday morning. I understand there were some then Wednesday evening. That was a telephone system, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the reports were made. I didn't say it, so I couldn't confirm one way or the other. Our civil defense director, Donald Spencer, was in his backyard with Joe Goodrich from the uh, New York Daily News, who was also Don Oregon's patrol. 
and he said he had read about this, uh, there was a hole being melted in the ice. This is what brought him out here. It means he has studied this for quite some time, and he just wanted to see what it was. From what uh, they told me, this here say again that they were in Spencer's backyard and had also the same type of sighting around 6.40 Wednesday night. I think there are a lot of holes in that ice up there, though. I Which mean, uh, are normally there. Right. The uh, two big holes that they had reference to first were, I'd say, within 30 to 35 yards of the intake on each side of the intake, one on this side of the intake, one on the opposite side of the intake, which is normal for this time of year with the water being down as low as it is. It's not getting away from it. I mean, that's a word I learned. You know, I did work down here for four years. I saw how the size would work. I would pull, pull anything that would be here that, 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 that sounds a little screwy, but the, the other part of it I can't pull. The uh, reflection of the light, uh, I think, or I mean, the American possibly bear me out on this one. On that first night we were up there, the reflection from Baby's house. Yes, yeah, so I remember that. Yes, I remember that. I remember you know, the fact that the ability was with us that night also. And as far as this reflection on the ice, that's just about what I would buy on that. There was a reflection from uh, lights in someone's there house. There was a house placed back over behind the reservoir. It's way up on top of the hill. And they had an excessive number of lights on this night, which is unusual for this house. And they may have had company and had the flood lights on and so forth, which would turn us like that. I'm not saying that these fellows didn't say it, but all I'm saying is what we saw when we were up there. Who, who saw that last show? Uh, Fred Steins, custodian down here. Spencer was with him, and I think Dick Bruman was with him. I'm not sure. There, there were a lot of people who saw what they wanted, like Arthur said before. There were a lot of people, but uh, there were some, most of uh, the observers who observed it uh, saw the same thing, who saw the right thing. Uh, without mentioning any names or without any discredit, any of these uh, other names I have thrown in here, I've known most of them for years, and as far as credibility on some of them, I would be a little bit inclined to disbelieve. Uh, it's just my own personal opinion, as far as I don't mention any names on them. Incidentally, in connection with this Wednesday night starting, when I come home from work Wednesday night, why uh, my wife and my next door neighbor, Mrs. McPhee, were out in the backyard, and they told me they were watching something. And uh, I went back and I did uh, look at what they were watching. And again, my, uh, I thought it might be a light. I mean, uh, electric part, they were looking at it, told me it was moving in the sky, and when I saw it, it appeared to be moving in the sky. Yeah, did you remember what you had seen the previous night? No, this was much brighter, but I saw it in the second night. Yeah, the second night, this is why I thought it was an electric part. How high up was it? It was very low, it was just when I saw it, it was just barely over the uh, top of the hill. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I thought it was an electric part. So, this is up to West Park. This is back, back in my backyard. I mean, but the where the light was, I, it was... Uh, to the east or to the west? No, it would be to the uh, west, and probably to the northwest. I thought it was a light. I wasn't too impressed with it. When I saw it, I thought it was just... Oh, well, 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 from the history of the previous night. But they did tell me, and they uh, said that they had watched it when it was in the sky, and that it moved down at this position. How long did you watch it? Oh, I looked at it for five, five minutes or so. And just stayed there, or did it stay in the same spot? Uh, was it still there? <laughs> yes, it was still there. But uh, did your wife watch any water? No, no, but then uh, shortly we had that. I mean, a half an hour or so later, when it came back in, and said it was gone. Uh, I didn't even go out and look to see what was gone or not, but she said it was gone then. And, uh, but they, uh, I, I thought that they were just being, having, this was getting the store that was put in their mind from the night before, but they said they watched it from, from a higher level, down to the level that I saw it. Well, Billy, Billy said it uh, Billy and uh, my wife, they said they saw something on Wednesday night. Uh, 
uh, with a very I was looking out the window, looking out the door. Now, I don't know what time that was. And I looked, but I couldn't see anything. Maybe because, you know, two bright lights in the house. And yeah, right. In fact, I even turned the lights off in the house to see if I could see anything. Well, he's had a small move up here and then describe what you saw. I Wednesday night, you were keeping you know, an eye out for it so you see it tonight with Lily come on the day. So, me and Lily were at a little bit. We watched that a little bit. He had a small telescope with him. And, you know, we, we kept looking around for it. And he was watching it. It was uh, towards the uh, west. And it was uh, pretty high in the sky. Not, you know, between the sky and the sky. And we were watching it. And he was watching it. I was just uh, unis, you know. So we went in, and I saw where he was waiting for me. We went back out, and it was gone. And uh, when I went upstairs, you could see it from the upstairs, and it was just barely over the mountain. And then what direction was this? About the big southwest. And then and, and what this was about 6.30. Somewhere around And this was uh, a very, very start. And then it's got the birds on the other side. Mm-hmm. And then we were going to the store, it was about 7 30. And we saw something, it wasn't very bright, it was uh, smaller than what we had seen at the reservoir. But it looked sort of like it was changing colors too. It was heading in like sort of uh, the south, you know, south east uh, direction. And it was, it was traveling pretty quick. It was near two stars, and then all of a sudden it started to move. Picked up speed when we came back out of the store. Uh, have you ever seen a satellite? Well, me and him, I'd say about two years ago, you so, uh, three nights in a row, it kept like, going this way. We were out in the back of the room, and I used to. But his father said it was probably just a booster burning up, finally burned up or something. Was this thing going uh, faster or slower than the thing you seen before? It started to be slow, and then it just kept moving away and got picked up speed. Uh, let's go back to the, the first night when you were uh, on the dam with your father. Did you describe that? You were in the dam. Sort of in the north, northwest direction. It's low over the mountain. And it's a little towards the uh, town on the side of the hill. And the same seemed like should be changing the color. Most of the time it was white. You know, it was pretty bright. It was a little bit bigger than normal star. And it was, every once in a while it seemed to get darker and brighter. Sometimes you couldn't see it. So, you know, unless you really strain the light, that kind of thing for me. We were watching that for about 10 minutes. It seemed to move around just a little bit. It's not fair to look around. And then we went off towards the dam, because you have to turn around at one end of the dam and come back down the lot. We went off down on the dam, and when we came back, we stopped and we looked. We could we weren't sure if you could see it, just like a little speck in the sky. We weren't sure if you could see it or not. You know, that was it. Then it appeared down in the wind. And then, you know, you didn't see it down. No, I don't know. How long did you watch it? Uh, about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, last night we saw something too. But that's, that's Friday night? Yeah, Friday night. Me and him, we were getting together, you know. So the star in the sky was like the same one we had seen Wednesday night. And this one disappeared about the same time. And then we didn't see the same coming back, but two friends of mine, he had just said two of them this time, coming back in the same direction, about the same speed as we had seen one going in the uh, east, that's the direction. Uh, you might be kidding me, bro. No, he was always excited about it. Yeah, but it was like that. It was like this was about the same thing. We really didn't know. We didn't keep an eye on it. But it did. Uh, it was bright. It was traveling. Oh, no, it wasn't traveling. It, was it. it looked like it was stationary. But when we came back, the store was gone. How long were you gone? We were in the store, say, about 100 feet. Yeah, it was in the store. We were gone to the store. About 10 minutes. Yeah, except this was lower in the sky. It had been on Wednesday night. How high was it the first year? Uh, I don't know. It was about... That was about, you know, I don't know how to explain it. No, I mean, 